Hey, welcome to day one of the vlogs. This is me and my trip to New York City for New Year's Eve. First off, I just wanted to apologize for the lack of videos or live footage of the first event on New Year's Eve and the drive there because one, I didn't want to film while we were driving late at night and while we were just in a confined quarters because I wanted to respect everyone around me. Uh, two, it was raining New Year's Eve and we were going through Times Squares and they were saying that in Times Square, the ball drop, you weren't allowed to have backpacks and such and I didn't want to get the camera wet or just taking chances or any of that stuff so I just decided to leave it for the next day when it wasn't going to be raining and we would be able to have our bags and everything. Um, <clears throat> so basically here this is what happened the first day. And I'll have video. I'll have some photos, and I'll have a video talking about the part we went to, and um, a video that kind of showcases New Year's Eve, what you know, what it was like that that moment. <clears throat> but we left on Saturday at 10 p.m. from Arkansas, and we ended up. We drove. We just drove nonstop, and we stopped for gas and such, and bathroom breaks. Um, the first thing that happened that was actually kind of funny was we found out that from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. in St. Louis, you can't pee. <laughs> now, the reason behind that is, is that it was probably about, it was probably about 12, 1 at night, maybe 2. Um, we were in St. Louis, Missouri. We were stopping to go and use the bathroom because we all had to use it. And we went to this gas station, and the lady said, yeah, the bathroom's back there. But from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m., it's locked. You can't use it. And it was like, what? It was, it was just this funny, weird situation. We were like, okay. So we got back in the car, and we drove to a convenient diner. It's a, called Convenient Diner. And we walked inside, and they were singing along to American Pie from the jukebox, and it was actually kind of cool. They, everyone knew the words of the chorus. No one knew the, the verses, but they all knew the chorus, and we were all singing along. So we used the restroom, and then we, um, we drove, continued driving and such. Um, one thing that happened that kind of set the tone for me, anyways, for the whole trip was... We were driving, and um, all of a sudden, my throat got a little sore, and I started to feel like I was going to start swallowing my tongue. Like it was this weird sensation that I had never felt before, and I was starting to freak out because I'm in the back seat of this moving vehicle, you know, tight space and everything. And here I am feeling like I'm going to start swallowing my tongue. And I'm freaking out to myself. And I and I just kind of was just like nonchalantly just kind of asking everybody. It's like, hmm, is it weird to feel like you're going to start swallowing your tongue? And they all kind of laughed like, yeah, that's kind of funny. And then I was like, no, I'm being serious. I mean, I started to freak out because I literally felt like I was going to swallow my tongue. And there was nothing that I could do or say that was going to subside that feeling. Like, my throat was sore, it was hard to swallow, and it was not a good experience. That, that It scared me so bad. I was praying. I mean, I always pray, but I was praying harder than I ever did. I was preparing for the fact that I was probably going to swallow my tongue and this was going to be it. This was the end of my life. <laughs> Which... I find out now is kind of ridiculous because it is medically impossible to swallow your tongue. I looked it up, but still, I, um, mm. uh, so a whole trip, pretty much my tongue was swollen and it was hard to swallow and it did kind of feel like I was going to swallow my tongue a little bit, which was all of my head. That was just a head thing. Um, but then I checked my tongue the next morning, uh, which I will put in some photos of what my tongue looked like. Uh, there was a medical term for what that was, but um, I don't remember it. And so I'm not gonna bother with that. 
But sorry, the t- tongue photos are kind of a little gross. Not not like bad, but just a little gross. Um, but yeah, so I had that issue going on. And then we got there to our hotel and kind of, it was a nice hotel. And we were just outside of New York City. So we we're in New Jersey. So we we're just a bus ride, like a 10, 15 minute bus ride there. It was about $8 round trip to get from our, ho- our, our hotel to New York City each time we went, which was not bad at all. But on New Year's Eve, Times Square and just New York City in general was just packed. There was trash everywhere. It smelled. It was rainy. It was it was not the greatest experience. I mean, I love New York City and everything, but it was so overcrowded because everyone wanted to be there for, for the new year, you know, and then... Everyone had trash that they were trying to dispose of, and they couldn't dispose of it because the trash cans were all full, so it was piling up and piling up. Now, granted, the next day, they were they all had them all, all the trash bagged up, and people were hauling them out towards the end of that day. So it did get taken care of. But that for that day, it was just disgusting. It was a disgusting day. I mean, there's not much more to say about it. But... I just kind of fought through the rest of the days with, you know, the thing with my tongue and my throat and all that and just kind of fought through that to try and enjoy the trip as much as I possibly could because um, there was a lot of things we were going to do and I wanted to enjoy as much of it as possible. So that's what you do. You push through. You push through. But it was a fun trip. It really was a fun trip and people that I got to go with were extremely fun and you know I met some new friends and got to have some new experiences and see parts of New York City that I didn't get to see the first time I went you know and you'll see some of that on the video itself and I'll try and give some tidbits and tips about things that you should or shouldn't do if you try and go to New York City um, but until then see ya everyone i just wanted to kind of show you all that i got for uh new year's applebee's party that i went to in new york city um we paid 400 dollars for our ticket and so i'm going to show you everything that we got because they gave us a goodie bag and i'm going to talk more about all the things that was there at the party so you kind of knew what all we were getting for 400 dollars. but here we go so here's the goodie bag that they gave us this um Pepsi drawstring bag. You know, the kind you can stick on your back, you know, the strings and everything. Which is pretty neat, pretty nice, and whatnot. And then if you go on the inside, I'll show you some of the goodies that we got. So in the bag, we got a 2019 Pepsi slash Applebee's beanie hat. Which is actually really kind of cool. You know, that, that, that's a great little thing. We got the stuff to make a 2019 glow in the dark glasses. I think the other parts of Twitter in here. Yep. Which is kind of cool. They're, they're kind of uncomfortable to wear, that's for sure. Um, I'll leave that one for a little bit later. So we got more of those. I got two pairs. I got 
that one. <laughs> I got some beads there. They were kind of passing out different colors, and so I just got that. They also gave us some twenty nine Tampa Bees sunglasses this time, which when you try to wear them and look through them, you can barely see because there's just little tiny holes everywhere, but that's really about it. Which is kind of neat. It matches the hat. Now, on New Year's Eve, it was raining, and so they did give us ponchos in our bags, which is cool. You know, little ponchos. I need a poncho. I got a poncho now. Um, let's see what else did they give us. Ha! Yes. Applebee gloves. Gloves to say Applebee's and guess Samuel Adams on them. And that's really cool. Gloves are really much needed and really cool. Alright, so that's all the goodies that they gave us in the bag. Now here's a look at the... Um, ticket that we had to get into this event. It's on a little lanyard, but it's New Year's Eve 2019 Times Square party. It kind of has like the terms and conditions. Um, you know, it was it was pretty cool. Yes, notice here it says you must be 21 years of age to consume alcohol. That's because we had a free an open bar. You know, alcohol was kind of just being passed around, and it was all a family event. So, you know, people were bringing their kids and whatnot, which I thought was kind of weird, considering that it was, you know, open bar type situation. But that's just me. So, for four hundred dollars, what we got was we got the party. They got all the gift bag stuff there that you see, you know, plus the when they started passing around party favors. And some other party favors that I just kind of, I had to toss because they were just the noisemakers and they got wet. And it just, you don't want to keep that stuff, no. But we got all that. We got into this party. Um, there's a DJ. He was playing live music throughout the whole night, which was pretty nice up until the very end when he started playing this rap music that was like using the F word and talking about drugs and sex and stuff. And they, they had to kind of shut that off very quickly because this was a family kind of party in a sense, and that was just a little tacky, I thought. But other than that, the music was really great, we were all dancing, uh, they had, a, they were passing around appetizers throughout the whole beginning to start with, uh, you know, wings and quesadillas and pigs in a blanket, which were all good. The wings were a little spicy, and one of our members, Jema, she tried one of the wings and if I could just demonstrate that expression she had, it was more like, it was kind of like a oh, ooh, ooh. like she quickly put that down and did not touch another bite because it was way too hot for her. Um, that was that was pretty funny, but it was good. And they had then they had like a buffet style food where they would serve you, but it was like there was chicken, mashed potatoes, um, vegetables, pasta. I mean, there was a good little mix of food, and it was delicious. It was all delicious. And so, they had that going on, and then they were passing around drinks on trays. They had, like, shots of different kinds, which I didn't take any of the shots. I, I'm not really a drinker. But they did pass around some, you know, like, sangria and, like, mixed drinks and, like, cups. And I had, I had a sangria. I didn't drink it all. I drank maybe about a fourth because I just... I'm not a big drinker, but I had water most of the night. But the food was good. And they also had desserts that they passed around towards the end as well, which was phenomenal. Um, the music was going all night. And uh, then at one point, they had belly dancers come out there. So we were had belly dancers that were perf kind of performing out there. And by the way, this is the world's largest Applebee's. It's two stories, so there's an upstairs and there's a downstairs to it. So that's kind of why it's the world's largest Applebee's. Um, but yeah, the belly dancers were there, and I was there watching it with Jema, and, um, I wasn't paying any attention to what was going on, I was just kind of staring off at something else, when, and then the next thing I know is, the crowd is dispersed, and here comes this belly dancer towards me, with one of her, like, I guess, boas, or what, one of those kinds of things, she wraps it around my, my neck, and she pulls me closer to her, 
And I'm like going, oh, no, this is happening. And so I grabbed Damon. I go, you're going to come with me if I have to go and do this. So we got pulled out to the dance floor to to um, dance with this belly dancer, which was which was fun. I mean, it was fun. She was very intense at what she was doing, though. I have to say she had the most intense eyes ever. But that was fun. That was neat. You know, um, Times Square on New Year's Eve was extremely crowded. It was overly crowded, if you ask me. It were, it was not my favorite thing because it just it was so, too many people and it was too crowded and it just smells. New York City is not the best smelling place ever. Let's just put that out there. It has some really bad smells because, you know, sewage and all that stuff. But it is a fun place. It is a fun place to be. So, yeah. That was basically everything that happened on New Year's Eve. You know, the party and all that stuff. So, for $400, belly dancers, music, DJ, uh, unlimited alcohol, unlimited food, um, party bags, party favors, and just a chance, and you could see the, the see they had the TV going, so they were showing New Year's Eve onto the TV as well. And then at midnight, we all got to go outside underneath it. We were right there by Times Square, so we got to see the ball drop live outside with all the people. And it was a weird experience. It was kind of like you get out there and you're like, oh no, let's just let the ball drop, please. Just let's just get over with so I can go home. And then it starts to go, and you and you could feel the energy of all the people, like. It's the new year coming. It's the new year coming. The ball's coming. The ball's coming. Everyone starts cheering and yell and screaming and and it's like wow. And you and you get hyped up for that for that brief moment. You're like yes, yes, 2019, 2019. And then it comes and afterwards it's like, okay, let's just get out of here. I'm just done. I'm done. 2019, yay! But I'm done. <laughs> you know. So it's very, it's very, it's very interesting. I don't suggest going for New Year's Eve. It's that's just craziness but if you want to i would suggest probably going to a party versus going to the actual Times square and trying to sit in there because if you go to Times square you if you're able to make it in which you have to come early to be able to make it in you can't go back out because if you go back out you can't come back in and you can't bring, you know, backpacks or anything like that. So basically you're stuck in this area and you better have a good game plan for going to the bathroom and all that stuff. So really just go to a party. That's probably, if you have to go to New Year's Eve, go to a party. And there's like a million of them everywhere. You know, all the big places have them. So you can find one to go to. And then if not, just stay at home and watch on TV. You know, other than that. That way, it was actually pretty. It was a neat experience. I'll just say that it was a neat experience. Glad it happened. I won't do that again. But I'll definitely be going back to New York City. But other than that, that was it. Bye.